Yeah. She said, step aside, sir. So I stepped aside. She goes, oh, were you on a flight um, from Syracuse uh, to Boston last week? Oh, my God. I said, yes. She goes, and I shit you not, this is what she said. Uh, we have reports that uh, you made a statement on board that you had a bomb and we're going to blow up the aircraft. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. <laughs> Welcome to Scream Dreams, The Nightmares That Shaped Us. I'm Catherine Corcoran. And I'm James A. Janice. And today we are sitting down with a musician that we just found on um, the corner of... Uh, Coenga. Coenga. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we thought he had some promise, so we decided to bring him. And No, uh, Spencer <laughs> Charnas is here with us today uh, from Ice Nine Kills. You may know him from other horror endeavors. He's a fabulous human being, talented man, and overall one of our really good friends. So we're really excited to have him today. Welcome. Thank you for having dreams. me. Yes, thanks for joining us, bud. I'm excited. Yeah. Let's get into it. Okay. Okay. What are your nightmares? <laughs> wow, just really taking yeah. it off you know, the top. Yeah, I don't like to I don't like to mince words. I don't like to waste time, Spencer. We I want to know what bush. scares you. Well, what what's are your interesting? Fears? I don't usually remember my nightmares because we we do dream every night, right? <laughs> That's what I've been saying. Yeah. Freudy Krueger mm -hmm. is the way, way I call it. <laughs> uh, but last night I was watching Exorcist Believer. I hadn't seen it yet, okay. and, and I was it was late at night, so I fell asleep. But I did dream I was inside the movie last night, and it was oh. very scary. Oh, yeah. But that's not usually what scares me. Exorcism stuff doesn't usually scare me. But my biggest fear since I was a little boy has always been a plane crash. Oh, oh. you are a musician who travels all oh, yeah. the time. You yes. Probably and, fly more than anyone. Yeah. And know. it was really debilitating until I found Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> so if you'd like to uh, supply me with any, go Our ahead sponsor. and uh, send to our P.O. box. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, so is it hard for you to fly? No, not anymore. Thanks to Xanax. <laughs> no, but like you have yeah. told me stories about it and you've included the Xanax. So like you do need that for I for do flights. need yeah. it. And now, I mean, I, it used to be debilitating. Like I think it started because my mom was always scared of flying. Mm -hmm. She was a nervous flyer mm -hmm. and it would be to the point where I was dreading it days leading up to when I knew we were going to Florida. Um, I was once involved in a emergency landing where we took off in, um, I think it was West Palm Beach or something, and the plane dropped the fuel. And the pod gets on. He's like, oh, no need to alarm anybody, but we are returning back to the airport as it is a three and a half hour flight and we've lost the fuel. <laughs> So there wasn't, and there, there wasn't. Had to turn around land. Yeah. So okay. we got right up and went right back down. But land like at the airport, not like yeah, not like in a field. Like like field. Yeah. Yeah. No, at a soccer field. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> Landed Those back at the kids. airport. Terrible kids. We killed one of the kids with the propeller. But um, so we got on the ground, and I remember my sister who was in high school at the time. I was like nine or eight or nine. She wanted to get back and hop on the next flight because she wanted to party with her friends. It was around like Christmas break yeah. or something. So she wanted to get back. And I was like, dad, this, I, this is, and this is before like Final Destination. I was like, this is a sign we should not be in the air tonight. Oh, wow. And we ended up staying in Florida, much to the dismay of my sister for like two more nights oh, at wow. the, the lovely you... Breakers Resort in West Palm <laughs> Beach. <laughs> but it turned out to be a blessing in disguise because we got more days on the beach. Sure. Well, but your sister, but not for your sister, she for was you. Pissed. Yeah. <laughs> but she was pissed at me anyway. And then there was another situation where, again, in Florida, I don't know if Florida yeah. is like bad luck with me and flying. We were going between Orlando and um, I think Boca, I think you fly into West Palm. And I was like maybe seven or eight years old at the time. And I go up to use the bathroom. I'm sitting next to my grandmother. My mom's in a few, mm -hmm. a row, a few, a few ahead of us. And as soon as I start to, you know, do my thing, urination, <laughs> all of a sudden the plane starts to like. Oh my gosh. Horrifically, like, not just like the turbulence where it's like a little bit, I'm talking about like oh, dropping. I've heard of those drops. Dude, I've never I'm experienced I'm pissing one. everywhere, <laughs> all over the walls. I, my shit's out. I'm pissing everywhere. <laughs> And my grandmother is yelling, my son, my grandson is in the bathroom. So the flight attendant opens the door. Oh my God, oh your God. pants I'm down. Pissing everywhere. I probably <laughs> pissed on the flight attendant. And she finally gets me back to the to my seat and we land safely. But that was another thing that. Maybe you like know, you're just kind of cursed or something. Like I, you have an air demon. 
something is going on. But I'll wrap up the entire thing with we found Xanax and now <laughs> I love flying. It's a lot of fun. Um, my bandmates tell me that sometimes I'm a little bit strange uh, in the airport. You know, whether it's kind of finding me sitting, uh, you know, in the middle of the terminal, like eating a Big Mac, like really intensely before the flight, like with my <laughs> like crossed legs. Spencer, it's time to go now. <laughs> okay. Almost leaving my bags in the terminal. You want to travel. With you should travel me. with me. And also t communicating with the flight attendants in a very strange manner, like okay. saying things that don't need to be said, like, uh, can I have a drink? I'm really thirsty. Or <laughs> Spencer, I hate to break it to you, but that's just how you, you talk. <laughs> I know, it's nothing to do with this. You're just regularly unnerving. <laughs> yeah, regularly unnerving. That's my, my nickname in high school. It's in your Twitter bio. <laughs> Twitter bio. And um, so that was that was a situation that happened. You know, I got past it. But movies like Twilight Zone with mm -hmm. Lithgow and the uh -huh. thing on the wing and then Final Destination. That didn't help. Absolutely terrifying. And I'm a big I'm a big Devin Sawa fan. Yes. Love Idle Hands, love Final Destination. And that movie, as ter as amazing as it was, was traumatizing to me and kept like just making my fear of flying worse. And full circle moment, circling back to the airport on this one, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago when I was flying to Spukala uh -huh. from Los Angeles, who do you think they sat me next to? Devin Sawa. Devin Sawa. Devin and you were like, Sawa. this is how I die. Yeah, uh, yeah but I was cool with it. Yeah. Oh, you, because of Xanax. <laughs> because of Xanax. <laughs> and he also said that like, at some point I fell asleep and like, I must have been like kind of drooling on him a little bit, but he was cool with it. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. liked it He's probably. He's a very chill guy. You know, He's I chill, saw so. him at your show uh, mm. when uh, you opened for Metallica here Name in drop. LA. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and, um, and he was there in the audience and I also had a final destination moment because I have a fear of roller coasters and I think oh. it has a lot to do with final destination. I would make my mother when we go to amusement parks growing <laughs> up, she had a book that it broke down everything that was going to happen on the ride and I would refuse to get on unless she read out loud to well, me. Like all the, the dips and the turns everything. And everything. I needed to know in advance before was I would agree. Was this a published book or was yeah, this like, this like so a thing weird. you can buy for like amusement you, parks? Had, I didn't know And you were reading like, <laughs> it as you were on the ride? Okay, right now I'm going to dip. Probably in the queue, I imagine. No, she would, she would like, she said I ruined every ride, not only for her because she would have to read it out loud, but for like all the people around us because she everything that was going to happen yeah, all, these spoilers. all the spoilers Horrible. yeah was revealed and then and so i just kind of you know i don't know i i guess i, I guess i was i think i was just a practical kid i wanted to know what i was signing up for sure. but then i would be on the rides and i would be like um nope this oh this is the this is, i see it the dinosaur that pops out there he is dinosaur or like i don't know why that but that's, that's like on the, a roller coaster? that's like the example i'm giving <laughs> no, <laughs> the, the raft ride oh, oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's, a bunch that's what i'm talking about thought, the one that you eat that eats you yeah. i thought you yeah. meant like now we're gonna go upside down and this one is the well dip. that too but i wouldn't agree to the upside down thing I that was too that. much oh really i don't oh, really like it. Me, it what about drops can you do the big drops? i no. can do them it just makes me kind of sick I it's have no desire. Oh, like physical thing? Yeah, yeah. like my That's dad. That's called getting older. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But I had that when I was like five. <laughs> oh, okay. Passed down from the father. He was terrible, like motion sickness. I remember uh, we went to Space Mountain, mm -hmm. I think that. Yeah. And my dad spent like three days in bed after oh, that ride. Oh, no. Because he was so physically. Wow, the Michael you know. Giacchino music didn't. Did that. not help. Wow. Oh, wow. Did not do it. <laughs> So, um, oh my gosh. Do you have do you have actual nightmares about flying and and flying disasters or do you mostly not remember your dreams? You I said? mainly don't remember my dreams. I do remember one flying disaster dream where um, my bandmate Dan, <laughs> who isn't afraid of flying, but he just has really also terrible motion sickness problems. No. <laughs> and I had some dream because we traveled with him before and and um I think he was having some disagreement with the flight attendant and they restrained they had to restrain him. He got restrained? Wait, no, wait no, a minute. In the dream. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. wait, I, thought this I forgot was that we were talking about a dream for a second. Okay. I was like, "Damn." <laughs> yeah, he went crazy, right? And they restrained him sort of like Hannibal Lecter style with like a thing in his mouth and he's vomiting everywhere all over the place. 
n- yeah. worse than my pissing all over the airplane and yeah. the flight attendant. And then we just go down. So anytime I mention that story, we all have a good chuckle about it. But was I it just, when you were making your new um, your new music video? Was that meet and greet? Was it like, were you just thinking Hannibal Lecter-esque? No. This is way before that. I don't know this why was- he was restrained, but like he had something over his mouth. Mm-hmm. I think he was trying to use it to, like his cell phone midair and the flight attendant oh, didn't like it. No! You sit Get back down. Airplane mode. Yeah. yeah. Or on airplane mode. Well, and I also, I don't know, is this live? Are we live? <laughs> yes, we're live right now. <laughs> Did I tell you this other story about why uh, I might be on a. a oh, flight? I was going to bring no. it up and, and say, is it okay we for can you to talk cut about it? I, mean, I don't care. We can because cut it if you don't want no, it. No, you don't want no, to cut we, this. This is one of the best stories <laughs> okay. ever. You want like, me to tell the story? It's one of my favorite. Okay. Chelsea and I have told this story. Two other people. I love that. Yeah, because it's, it's that good of a <laughs> it's story. It's that good. You've just taken it upon yourself. Exactly. As We're you like, know. let me tell you about the story that happened to our friend Spencer. I'll okay. streamline it because it is kind of long. But basically, <laughs> it all began about a month ago. Struggling musician. No, just kidding. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was flying back from Syracuse to Boston. And let's leave the, the airline unnamed. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a jet of sorts. Okay. We'll just call it. A jet of sorts. And uh, I was placed... Uh, in first class, they told me on on a jet uh-huh. back to Boston from Syracuse, uh-huh. and uh, it was one of those flights that was like um, this air this nice airline by way of this airline, which was not nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, old plane, and my phone was was dying. And at the time, my mom has been kind of sick, and I wanted to make sure I could check on her. And there's nowhere, f- no outlet to plug in the phone. Uh-huh. So that's. A red flag there. I need to use my phone. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. it's not like a t- ten minute flight. Yeah. So I, um, boom, you know, ring the bell. The flight attendant, she's already left. I know. I like the sound effects. Boom. One I more ring. Time. Boom. Thank you. I ring the bell. I think I think you call it a bell. Whatever. Uh-huh. And I say very politely, um, "Excuse me, is there? Um, there's nowhere to you know plug in my phone. My phone's about to die." Without me even finishing that, said, uh, "Is old plane? We don't have any of those. Just leaves." Old plane, no, <laughs> leaves. So I kind of, you know, nudge the guy next to me like, can you believe that? And he just gives me one of those looks like this guy's not on my side either. I don't know if it's the guy's, you know, girlfriend or whatever. Bad, bad vibes all around. So then my phone dies and I've, I've got nothing. I don't have uh, any earpieces to watch the TV or whatever uh. movie is being provided. So I've got nothing but to just kind of stare at the back of a seat for whatever two hour flight. I don't want to do that. So I boom. One more time. Boom. Once more. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Ten minutes go by. Nothing. I'm like, I-, I can't believe this. You know, I'm ringing the bell. So I go up uh maybe five, ten minutes later to use the bathroom. And what do I see? I see the flight attendant on her phone texting in the seat like this, like chuckling or playing a game of sorts. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Piss me off. <laughs> and I was just like <laughs> Oh, I see that your your uh, phone is on. Say, sir, you need to you need to remain seated. I said, well, I'm just using. Get back to your seat, sir. And I, again, very rude to me. I don't know what's going on. Uh-huh. So I, I, you know, maybe I took a few too many Xanax, whatever, <laughs> and had a little bit of something to drink. I'm starting to get really upset. My phone's dead. I don't have anything, you know, to do to to keep me occupied for the rest of the flight. So I asked the guy next to me. I see that he has an iPad with like a thunderbolt thing uh-huh. which I could easily charge and he knows the situation he knows that I needed my phone charge so um I said sir I know it's a terrible imposition but do you think I could just charge my phone just for a minute into your to your iPad and my mom uh, he goes no it sounded like the same voice <laughs> that the flight attendant no they were siblings I don't know what it was they were <laughs> they just hated me so I'm sort of fuming at this point, and and I'm not proud of what I did after this. The plane lands, and it was a dick move. I'm not I'm not gonna say it wasn't, but I just I tore up a bunch of paper and I just threw it all over my seat. I don't know. So was it, it was a petty, stupid, like total asshole rock star kind of thing to do. I, but it was just a Xanax. Is what I'll blame it on. <laughs> okay. But she was definitely rude, and so was the guy next to me. Bad, bad. Not that either of them would be cleaning that up. No, that's <laughs> that, that's what I found out later. So <laughs> I'm sorry to whoever had to clean that up. I'm such a dick. So um, we're exiting the plane. And uh, you know how the flight attendant stands at the door to, to exit, right? Uh-huh. No, thank you for, you know, thank you for flying with us. 
So the guy ahead of me, he would have been the only one who might have seen me throw the paper on the ground. Mm -hmm. And again, it's paper, you know? It's not like I like yeah. vomited or threw a bunch of... Or pissed all over pissed the Pissed like you're know? right like on the, the other, other fly yeah. or, or vomited in my dream <laughs> with Dan. Um, so uh, instead of the guy who was next to me exiting the plane, I see him step right to the flight. I was like, this guy's going to rat you out. Rat me out. <laughs> so I said to him, Oh no, sir! You, you you can go ahead. He he turns to me, same voice as the flight attendant, same voice as he used. Her, just one word, no. <laughs> so I was like, "Fuck, this guy is gonna rat me out," and I was a little um, obviously paranoid because of the Xanax. Probably, I mean, what? It's not a crime, you know. But still, I'm I run off the plane. And I'm like, shit, I, I gotta, I gotta ditch the hoodie I'm in because that's gonna make me because I got this black hoodie. So I remembered the movie uh, in The Fugitive, when <laughs> Harrison Ford is trying to escape at Chicago at the the Irish Day Parade where they dye the water green or whatever, and he takes off his coat, and he puts on a dumb green hat, you know, some a leprechaun hat or something. So I ditch my hoodie and I run. This is Logan Airport, so there's a lot of Celtics memorabilia, and buy some ugly fucking green neon Celtics hoodie that I would never wear normally. <laughs> throw it on. They only had like a triple. You thought they were XL. coming after you. For I your thought they were after me. Yeah, yeah. I thought the guy was like, that's the guy. He destroyed the paper. He threw it because maybe it was like the, like the safety manual. I don't know. I was ripping up anything. I don't know. How much paper are we talking? It's quite a hefty amount. <laughs> yeah, I threw How it many off. reams? <laughs> Several reams. <laughs> okay. In the hundreds of reams. So I've got this triple XL green neon Celtic hood, Celtics hoodie on, and I make it to baggage claim. Whew. I get out of it, and I got a free, not a free hoodie, but, you know, a $75 hoodie I'll never <laughs> wear again. So I thought, that's fine, whatever. End of the story. Next week, I have to fly back to LAX from Boston, same airline, a jet, the uh -huh. color of which will go unnamed. <laughs> I step forward about to board. Out of nowhere, this woman sidesteps, like blocks me like this. She said, no, same kind same, of, it's not the same woman. woman, but it's the same voice. I don't know if they train you on this airline. No, <laughs> will you step aside please, sir? I'm like, oh fuck, they know about the paper. <laughs> But then again, like what? What is the crime? Assault with with uh, with paper? I don't think you could do serious time for that. Um, it wasn't assault because you just left it vandalism. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. yeah, petty vandalism. Petty van. I don't know what it is. I guess littering would be maybe. <laughs> sure, yeah, but it is a plane. I don't know. Origami murder. Origami <laughs> murder. Um, Gorigami. Anyway, so she has me step aside, and I think they're just going to talk about you know the paper. Um, and, and mind you, the entire line behind me can hear everything that's being said to me. Yeah. She said, step aside, sir. So I stepped aside. She goes, oh, were you on a flight um, from Syracuse uh, to Boston last week? Oh, my God. I said, yes. She goes, and I shit you not, this is what she said. Uh, we have reports that uh, you made a statement on board that you had a bomb and we're going to blow up the aircraft. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. <laughs> So this mother, can I swear? I don't know. Yeah, oh, yeah. God. This motherfucker that was next to me was so offended by the paper and by asking for a charge that he told the flight attendant that I had threatened to blow up the airplane. Wait. I love the left turn of that story. Is that, that's not where I thought this was going fuck, in. No, dude. you never expect it. So I, 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 go, I go, there's like a five second pause. What? It's, it's 8 a.m., by the way. I don't know what's going on. What did you say? B blow up the airplane? Uh, that's the report we've been given, sir. Mind you, the entire line. So they all think you're a terrorist. Yeah, they think I'm a terrorist. It's like, I would never say such a stupid thing. I, that is completely crazy. I, w I will say that the person sitting next to me was a was a lunatic and it was not. <laughs> oh, so then you just pivoted on him. I pivoted on him <laughs> and the flight. And, and I said, excuse me, your flight attendant, because it was the same airline, was very rude to me. And um, I don't know if the guy next to me had, he must have had some personal animosity. He thought my hair was better than he, his hair <laughs> or something. I don't hair. know. Yeah. Or my sweater was nicer. And it, it, that's a, just a bold faced lie. 10 more seconds go by of talking to you. All right, get on the plane. <laughs> so that's, that's how you clear. That's how you clear your name. Yeah. Just deny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, it wasn't me. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't me. All right, get on the flight. So this is disturbing <laughs> for a number of reasons. First of all, that that guy would be so pissed and kind of respect the audacity 
to pivot it's from a big move paper from littering yeah. to uh, terrorism and blowing up a commercial airliner. So that I kind of did respect <laughs> on a small level. I wish it wasn't directed towards me. <laughs> Secondly, I guess this airline's policy is we take your word for it. Yeah. Are you a terrorist going to blow up the plane? No. no. Get on board. Yeah. <laughs> Third, if they're a terrorist, they have to say they're a terrorist. Exactly, the yeah. They have to declare it <laughs> mm -hmm. like you would, I don't know, like at the duty-free shop. Thirdly, if that's a word, thirdly, <laughs> the entire plane behind me heard that they thought that I had a bomb on a previous so now jet. So you have an, anima an, what, an, an animosity. Animos animos what is the plural for animosity? A, a an animus. <laughs> it's a flight filled with animosity. Terrible animosity. But everyone was super nice to me after that. Well, point. I think, you know, a little bit. Little they were a little bit threatened because yeah. I would, yeah. But. I think, did you go, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 ask me. Did you, like, throughout the plane ride, go like, uh, uh, like a Kaboom. few times? Kaboom, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> but I did find a joke. Just sneeze really loud. Uh, chew. <laughs> Uh, but I did uh, realize, like, right after the interaction when I got on the plane that I missed such an opportunity for a good joke. Because I could have said to them when they were going to let me back on. I said, uh, um, I'm still in seat C4, right? C4? Kaboom. Uh. Um, good dad joke there. And, uh, yeah, so that's my story of, uh, I guess, being a suspected terrorist on a commercial so airline. So has it happened again since? Like, do they stop Five every times. time? No, no. <laughs> No, I, 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 so I don't think I'm on any no fly list. Probably after this episode, I will be. But this, I think I'm just marked on this airline. For is, some is this your first public retelling of the story? Uh, yes. Okay. So this is an exclusive. Nice. Yeah. Exclusive. Wow. Exclusive. Yeah. Look so kaboom. Us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Inserts effect. Yeah. That's yeah. So the it's no. <laughs> I'm scared. I started off scared of planes, scared of terrorists, scared of crashes, and then. I guess I became one in their <laughs> eyes. I mean, I guess that is the the metaphor of life, right? You know, it mm -hmm. just comes full circle. That which you are afraid of, you become. Mm -hmm. This is very, it's very deep. Very craft, <laughs> yeah. right? Whatever you put out there, you get back. Yeah, absolutely. Times three. It's about oh, that time. Oh my oh gosh! My. I just every time it shakes, you know, I, I they have to prep, they have to prep me with with the roller coaster prep before oh. this. You feel that? Yeah. 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 It's coming. It's coming. She's mm -hmm. here. I know she's here. Same stage pyro. Oh my, oh my god! The real thing, Spencer. <laughs> Holy shit! Here she comes. Oh my god! Hi, I'm so Laura. happy to see you guys again. Yeah, I love it when you join us. I I love to pop in and do my little sidebar. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Um, I first met you at a convention, I think. I think so. Yeah, we're we're all have seen each other at conventions, but yeah. you were saying I met you at a convention, mm -hmm. and that was when we first like all actually. Did we actually first meet or talk? Uh, we briefly right spoke to you, I think, uh, at a convention prior to that, but it was a, yeah. just like a oh, we're a big fan. Uh, but like that was when we first got to talk to you as like a person, you know, as right. a, as mm -hmm. most like fan and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, it was the James Con, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, yet. not yet. Get it. The James Conn. He's a great actor. That I think is he's hilarious. Dead. James Conn. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Funny, funny. Okay. Yeah. He's good. I'm a dad And I guy. was at your show the other night. Yes. That you did. That was so good. Oh, thank yeah. you man. so much. I was really Dude, impressed. We missed you. So we missed you so much, were you? man. Which one? Which day was that? Was Thursday, that day? You were at a wedding. A wedding in Michigan. Sorts. Yeah. Mm. At this time of year, man. Your goddamn yeah. friends have the nerve to get married. <sighs> But I loved it? your videos. Thank they were you. So cool and so creative. And not only are you a, a musician and a filmmaker, budding filmmaker, you're also very funny. Why? Thank you're you very kind of much. Mm -hmm. yeah. I appreciate that. Growing up on a healthy diet, a naked gun, and carrot top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Why does okay. everyone laugh when I say that? <laughs> well, well, I'm a fan of yours as well, thank and you. I just saw Suitable Flesh, which is. Yeah. Fucking badass! Right. If you guys right. haven't seen yeah. it, I have not. Have yeah. seen October twenty seventh, right? Technically, right. I'm in yeah. it. Technically, my voice is in you it. Are. Oh, yes. you're, you you're are. You're in the ending. I, I don't know how they could have made it without me. Frankly, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, we have some some voiceover for the sounds. Ooh. I don't want to give the movie away, but you know, there's somebody gets locked away, kind of in an insane oh. asylum, and then we hear all these different voices, mm -hmm. and you're one of the voices. Cool. We just asked our friends to come in. And yeah, help it was us the out. best so time. It was nice. a great day. Yeah. It was so yeah. much fun. So we're going to put all of our creative powers to good use right now and play a game. That's why I'm here Hell to do yeah. a Mad Lib. Are Ooh. you familiar with Mad Libs? I've read about it. Mm. Yeah, you fill in the words fill in the blanks. Words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then we make a story. Um, like so I have some words for you 
some cues for some words that you need to pick, mm -hmm. and then we're going to put them into the story. I like that. Okay, it's so a script. And and then our little script supervisor mm -hmm. Addison is going to fill them out for us. And an Thank adjective you. adjective is a descriptive word. Oh, yes. It, it, des <laughs> yes. it describes a noun. It does. Right. Yeah. Yes. yes. And and we have some verbs so too. And so you know what the verbs are. Yeah, sure. What? Soaking dog. Soaking dog. Yes, that's a good yes. example. That's, that's, a, that's an adjective. Yeah, if it's raining. No, yeah, no, I got it. I feel like soaking <laughs> wet is a more complete version of that. Soaking Just, dog. Soaking. It's all good. Well, maybe, it's not, but a dog, yeah. maybe the dog likes to soak in the tub. Yes. Yeah. Which, mm -hmm. your sure. dog, okay. Glomer. She, Glomer. <laughs> Glomer. She, <laughs> Glomer. Glomer does not. Okay, yeah. I'm going to put this back on the rails now okay, and ask sorry. you, the first question is, type of music venue. Theater. Awesome. Style of music. Death metal. Name of a rock star, fictional or otherwise. Oh, Mick Jagger, not the sandwich, the singer. <laughs> <laughs> Type of fabric. That's so interesting. Oh, uh, Dacron. Dacron. What is that a color? I don't know what Dacron is. I don't know. I don't know I think I that is that like, from the movie PCU. It's like cotton or... I think, I think it works. I, think, Wait, I feel like that's an Elias right there. That's Elias. No. Can somebody look somebody that up? Look it up I think it's like I'm pretty sure Dacron. David Spade How do you spell said, that? I don't know. Dacron. 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 Dude. Wow. 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 I tested right, a genius level on my SATs. <laughs> yeah. Dacron. Okay. Dacron was Dacron. an SAT. You, and you just I came up so. with that like right yeah, away. Yeah, that was a media. Uh, <laughs> okay. An animal type of animal. Brisket. That's not an animal. Pigeon. That's not no an pie. animal. <laughs> I did at one point think a brisket was a separate animal with hooves and six horns or something like that. But it's just a cut of the meat. Yeah. It is. That's what that is. It's very tasty. You remember tasty. that. Yeah. Okay. Musical <laughs> instrument. No, wait. He has to come up with an animal, though. He said oh, pigeon. Oh, wait. Oh, pigeon? Pigeon's yeah. an oh, okay. animal. Sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Totally. I was still on brisket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to go back Nothing to the Nothing like brisket. a good pigeon yeah. brisket. Musical instrument. Xylophone. Okay. Weapon. Uh, golf shoe. Golf shoe? Golf oh, shoe. The, oh, like the cleats? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, my They're God. Spiky. That's so clever. Yeah. That's great. I like that's that. That's great. Okay. Yeah. Adjective. Sobbing. I guess that, no. I'm going to change that. It's kind of a verb. verb. Mm -hmm. Well, well, I was thinking sobbing wet, but that's not a real thing. <laughs> that's right? not sobbing. Um, <laughs> sopping wet. Sopping. Sopping. That's what sopping. I meant. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, sopping. Sopping is what I meant. Yeah. Sopping. Okay. okay. We're taking it. Sopping. Sopping. Yeah. That, yes. that word's going to work perfectly. Yeah. A town. Uh, Haddonfield. Awesome. Another adjective. Um, hmm. Soaking. I'm, I just want to go like, with this. Why is it really it's wet? Really because it's raining. Okay? It's <laughs> a rainy rain a day in out. Los Angeles. Uh, it's raining today. Okay. Another musical instrument. But once it was sunny. Um, hmm. The stand-up <laughs> bass. I was gonna no, it's very myself, weird. I stop myself? <laughs> uh, okay. Another animal. Um, besides brisket and besides pigeon. Besides brisket. Um, is an emu an animal? It is. Yeah. Yeah. What is it's like a, it's like an ostrich kind of looking. Thing. It's like yeah. yeah, I think it, it's like a dinosaur. Does it have looking. tentacles? No, no, it's a bird. Tentacles, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Barbara's here, yeah. so emu. Emu. Okay, emu. Okay, a number. Nine. A verb. Dashing. Yeah, dashing mm -hmm. through the snow. Mm -hmm. uh, a body part. <laughs> uh, uterus. <laughs> that's a part of the body. Speaking of which, yeah. 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 it's a part. That is yeah. correct. A pet name for a lover. Elias. <laughs> no, not a pet name. Oh, a pet. Oh, I got. Like I thought like a lover like that's also or... a pet. <laughs> oh, booby. 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 Yeah. Booby. Yeah, is that what you call booby? Nadia? Maybe. <laughs> She's not telling. She's my nightlight. Yeah. She is. Lifelight. Yeah, that's spoiler. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler. Yeah, nightlight. Yeah. Or googie. I, I often find myself saying that to to dogs on the street. I go, ah, Googie. Uh -huh. So we'll go with Googie. Googie. Okay. Speaking of nightlights, though, I Just do think facts, we basic. should have <laughs> some we? merch and have a nightlight of Screen Dreams. Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah. Is someone yeah. writing these down? Yeah. How do we yeah. know we remember? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Addison's Add writing it down. Say, no, we're just, she just has a brilliant yeah. memory. I'm an actress, and like you just tell me something, and I remember it. Yeah. Uh, where are we now? Childhood pet. Uh, Sammy. Sammy? Where are we now? 
No, no. As a, the actual animal. Oh. I was like wondering where we were in the oh, order. Oh, okay. Because you said it as one piece. So what am I saying? A name? Like, like what kind of, what is a child, like a childhood pet? Did like you have oh, a, a squirrel? Uh, sure. A squirrel? Ooh, a squirrel? Okay. A squirrel? Yeah. You had a childhood pet it, that was a squirrel? I mean, there was a squirrel that was about. Okay. You know, that I, <laughs> in your yard. Yeah, that I You cut. considered that your pet. Yeah. That was your first yeah. pet. Or, okay. Yeah. Okay, a collar. <laughs> um, hmm. Lime green, like the hoodie that I put on yes. mm -hmm. to, yeah. to um, evade, escape. escape the authorities. Mm -hmm. A way to murder someone. Golf shoe to the face. <laughs> Good to okay. the face. We're going for this golf shoe thing. We, we love are. the golf uh, yeah. shoe. Mm. It's a really unassuming one. That's how Do you, you play golf? No. I like the golf carts, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to have one. They're fun. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. those, too. But I always thought there should be a slasher movie that was kind of golf themed. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Well, Hell of a slice. Yeah. 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 Oh. And, uh, <laughs> and the tagline was um, that this club, the greens run red. Nice. Oh, oh my man. God. Don't yeah. steal that shit. I told shit you, from comedian. Me. Okay, one <laughs> last thing a weapon. Oh, I thought I already did golf another shoe. Do another weapon. The, the other golf shoe. Well, okay. It was okay. a way to murder someone. Was like what? What did he say? Golf shoot to the face. face. Golf shoot to okay, the face. So weapon. another another weapon. Just think of another weapon. Wow, another weapon. I guess I'll go with ice pick. Mm -hmm. Ice pick. Okay. I like ice pick. It kind of goes with ice nine kills. Mm -hmm. ice oh, pick. perfect. Nice. Yeah. I like it. Okay, we'll be right back with our final presentation mm -hmm. of our Mad Lib for this episode. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so, you know, our Mad Libs are interesting. Sometimes they're Mad Libs and sometimes they're scenes from kind of like movies or what could be a movie. <laughs> yeah. and so Catherine writes these for us, a lot of them. And so we have some, we have a narrator. Yes. And we have uh, a few parts. Yes. And we haven't read this before. So this is all cold to us. Mm -hmm. and yeah. So that's cold part read. of the fun yeah. of it. Okay, so we're going to begin. Okay. I'll be reading the stage instructions. Uh, Spencer will be playing our rock star, Mick Jagger. Mm -hmm. Barbara will be playing Lisa, not Correct. to be confused with Leah. And, and James It's will just be playing, written Leah and Lisa on here. Uh, but, eh, whatever, we'll figure you it know, out. You know, it's a work in progress. Okay, yeah. this is a draft. This is a table read. Um, yeah. And uh, James will be reading Mike, not to be confused with, with Mick. Mick. <laughs> yeah. Mick. Interior, theater, night, a dimly lit theater, an eerie silence fills the air. Dust particles dance in the beam of a single flickering light bulb. The stage is set for a death metal performance of a lifetime. Enter Mick Jagger, a menacing figure dressed in black dichron, his face concealed beneath a sinister pigeon mask. He carries a blood-soaked xylophone adorned with razor-sharp golf shoes. Ooh, scary. Mm. Mick Jagger steps onto the stage. The crowd's anticipation is sopping. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so, oh, man. Holy hell. Wow. Now I'm flattered. <laughs> what a concert. Suddenly, the haunting <laughs> sound Holy of his shit. signature xylophone fills the air, sending Ooh. shivers down the spines of the audience. They cheer. Yeah. <sighs> As the music intensifies, the crowd starts to realize that there's something different about it. It's a sinister serenade that echoes within the darkest corners of their souls. Hello, Adenfield. <laughs> Are you ready to listen to some death metal music and die? Yeah. The crowd's uneasy cheering begins to turn into nervous gasps. <sighs> Mick Jagger's gaze locks onto two unsuspecting audience members. Lisa a devoted groupie with a lifelong infatuation for Mick Jagger, and oh Mike, God. a talented bass player from a rival band who despises Mick. You two, you want to be my little emus for the evening? Oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! I dreamed of this moment for nine years! I'll do anything for you, Mick Jagger. Please spare me. Nope, nope, that's no, Mike, that's not me. Mick. <laughs> that's Mike, oh, not Mick. Mine says Mike, Mick. I'm Mike. Oh, this is a misprint. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, it's M I K is Mike. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I'll give you the lead in. Line. Okay, yeah, lead in, lead in. Let's lead in. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I dreamed of this moment for nine years. Ice nine years. <laughs> I'll do anything for you, Mick Jagger. Please, spare me the theatrics. I wouldn't be caught dashing helping you, Mick. The crowd erupts in laughter, <laughs> caught between amusement and tension. This must be part of the act. Mick raises his xylophone, making a sound with which resonates with uterus-chilling <laughs> power. Yes. The crowd <laughs> wave, the sound waves seem to warp reality itself, distorting the world around them. The theater walls crack, revealing glimpses of a grotesque world beyond. Wow, Mick, your music is so killer! It's literally tearing down the walls. You have no idea, my googie. <laughs> googie. Googie. As the no, walls crumble, zombie squirrel creatures emerge. They are a twisted blend of horror and lime green slime. Lingering where the walls once were, they dance menacingly to mixed tune, clear hunger in their eyes. This is absurd! I won't let you steal the spotlight with your cheap tricks, Mick! Mike turns to the audience. Don't fall for his gimmicks, everyone! Give death metal music the artistic dignity it deserves! Oh, come on, Mike! Can't you just enjoy the show? She yells out to Mick. Golf shoe me to the face! Me, with your squirrels <laughs> of doom, hey, Mick. If you insist, Lisa, you have been waiting nine years <laughs> after all. Suddenly, his xylophone transforms into tentacles made <gasps> of ice picks, which begin slithering across the stage. The crowd is equal parts terrified and mesmerized. Time to make some music, Lisa. The tentacles strike, but Lena Ma Lisa manages to dodge them while Mick skillful well, Mike, not Mick, Mike skillfully deflects them with his own base. Lisa is thrilled. That's right, Mick! Come and get me! I'm ready! No! I won't let you harm anyone with your twisted music, Mick! Mick's eyes gleam with sadistic glee as he snaps his fingers. The zombie squirrels fly from the walls, surrounding Mike and Lisa and knocking them to the ground. The crowd alternates between screams and cheers, caught in the surreal spectacle. My squirrels are hungry for flesh. The demon <laughs> squirrels, squirrels <laughs> surround Mike and Lisa, sharp teeth piercing their skin and drinking their blood. Mm. Lisa reaches out to the audience around her, gasping for air. It's not... The audience stops cheering. They look to Lisa and around the theater, beginning to panic. There's no way out! Mick Jagger watches his audience, thrilled by their fear. He begins to cackle sinisterly. Ha 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 ha! Try to run, little emus! You'll never escape me! Fade out. Yay! <laughs> that was good. Yeah. That was really fun. Oh my I God, think you wanted it. There was a lot of sexual uh, energy of, with, yeah. with the walls yeah. and everything. Yeah, a lot of bestiality yeah. happening. With the squirrels. <laughs> the I, I really like the squirrels. It's actually, it was yeah. a collaborative effort, you yeah. know. They're very fast, those squirrels. <laughs> the squirrels. Yeah. 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 Slip sliding all over the place. Well, everywhere. Mm. On my yard lawn. <laughs> okay, well, I know you guys have some other things to talk about, so see you later. Oh, bye bye. bye. Oh, wow. Oh. 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 She's gone. Always, so quickly. Yeah. But I love it when she joins us. Good. Terrible for my pulse. Do you need Blood some pressure. Xanax? Yes. <laughs> Please. And paper. <laughs> and a charger. We'll get we'll get you that on the break. What was your uh what was your exorcist nightmare? I don't really remember. I think I was just one of the little girls being uh okay. being, possessed being possessed by the yeah. I always thought the... you were secretly a little girl. Yeah. A little that lost little you have girl. A little girl energy. It's good. It's, yes. It's a good thing. Yeah, it's yeah. terrible. <laughs> but um yeah so there i am oh wow so that so horror movies don't scare you the exorcist you don't really have nightmares how do you then get the inspiration to create the the work that you do for those who don't know and you should if you don't um spencer is the front man for an incredible band ice nine kills that does uh print not wasn't always but more recently has uh created albums and music videos all around different not just horror franchises but other nightmarish 
horrific mm-hmm. concepts. Where where does the inspiration I'm just come a from? Sick guy, I guess. <laughs> but I used to be scared of those movies when I was a little kid. I was terrified of Michael Myers, terrified terrified of Friday the Thirteenth, um, terrified of the sequel to When a Stranger Calls, not the horrific remake. The sequel that was a made-for-TV movie called When a Stranger Calls Back. Oh, I don't think I've ever oh. seen that. Oh my God, it's it predates Scream by, I think, three years. Oh, so it was a '90s movie. It's a '90s movie, okay. and you've seen the original, right? Yeah, when a dude, calls. we gotta watch it sometime. All right, I yeah. think we're watching it <laughs> soon, all three of us. <laughs> and uh, it's it's a direct follow-up to the original. It's by the same guy, Fred Walton, oh, fantastic director, and uh, the first. 20 minutes of it are some of the scariest bits of cinema I've ever seen. When was the last time you watched it? Uh, within the last five years. I okay, so every... it's not just the thing where like you saw it as a kid, it was no. scary. Okay, okay. This is a, gr- I've just got chills just thinking of it. Wow. What and was I th- so scary about it? I think it just, it seemed so plausible. And it was before Scream and it's a very similar, obviously Scream yeah. was influenced by When a Stranger Calls, at least the first part of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know, whatever way they... They set up this babysitter um, looking after the kid. You know the old trope of the you know the babysitter and the man upstairs. Uh, this this particular retelling of it just is is genius, and it's just like a a, a master class in suspense. Oh wow! Wow, that sounded good. That yeah. should be a soundbite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it did. I, I we were talking earlier about how a lot of times it's the sound and I mean I'm sure you know this as a musician itself like the the visuals are not that terrifying often but it is the the score and the mm-hmm. sound when added that really adds the suspense. It's the same thing with with haunted houses. Is there like a particular score that you draw from or that is like you think is the most terrifying? Well, I think that's a, that's a great point, first of all. And I think also the lack of music, sometimes just silence. The birds. Mm-hmm. The birds. The, oh such my a God. good scare when that it's silent the, on mm-hmm. the pushing on the guy. With that was the, the first missing. movie that got me like ever. I was mm-hmm. really young and it was a sleepover and a girl sleepover, typical thing. And uh, we were, I want to say eight or nine, like young. And um, the girl whose sleepover was had older sisters. So they were like, you have to watch a scary movie. So like that was the one terrified me. Scary. Yeah, yeah, terrifying. Was it Bernard Herrmann did that too? I think so. Uh, Wait, with the birds, isn't it a thing where there's no music? It's all bird sounds. So there's no like score to that film, but I do think he is credited as uh, like designing the sound. Yeah, yeah. To this day, I don't trust crows. I just yeah. think they're like they're, creepy. They're weird. And they're really smart. And they're not mm, afraid they're of my smart. dog. They're and like they're flying smaller. cats. <laughs> <laughs> they're not afraid yeah. of my dog, which uh, annoys me. Like, like she'll run over to them and Loma. they just like look at her. Luna. Oh, Luna. <laughs> Loma. Loma. Paloma. That was close. That's yeah. yeah, pretty good. Was yeah. close. I also I made I made a mistake and called it some other name one time. Loomis. Loomis. Loomis would be good. <laughs> would He's be not good. human. Yeah. <laughs> it like once goes outside, it's like I walked you six times. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. She I shot him in the heart. <laughs> she does do we do the buttons where she says words. And I want to start introducing weird words because she's kind of a, an asshole. Like if you like she obviously loves the hungry button and we have no, so sometimes I'm like, no hungry, like you just ate. And she'll be like, no, love you. Whoa, <laughs> like she's wow. kind of an asshole. Wow. Yeah. I can't imagine my dog ever having close to that intelligence to be she's able to do really that. She's really smart. She can open doors and stuff too. Like she's just, so what, like, she she's like a no, she like, she uses her claws as thumbs and what? like twists things. Yeah, she's really smart. Yo, so are you sure it's not a person yes. in a dog suit? Yeah, like, it sounds like a you know, no I, love you. Really, it's a really, <laughs> yeah. does it really drive smart. the car? Sometimes well? on occasion, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. she drove me here today. I was a little tired. No, and it's right. a shiatsu, right? Shitsu. No, that's me. I got the I got the shiatsu. <laughs> shiatsu. Yeah. 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 What do you have? It's some big old wolfy mutt. Yeah, but, it's a big yeah. dog. It's a big old no, dog. I got, I got the dumb little lap dog. <laughs> Your dogs are very cute, though. I met them. Well, just one, Molly. But, yeah. but there's been other dogs at your house. That's oh, yeah, what... dogs hang out there. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's a dog. They'll walk by and be like, hey, you want to come, come and hang out? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a warm rug to lay on. If you they, and Nadia like had a pet, over. what would it be and what would it be named? Uh, it would be a bat named Elias. Oh, Elias. that was like very yeah. confident. Yeah, what is Elias? I don't know. Well, <laughs> uh, actually, it's uh, my dad 
tells me this story all the time. I don't know why, because I've heard it so many times. He thinks I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah, but parents do that. They do that, right? <laughs> he said the first time he realized that uh, I would be drawn to the macabre, I guess we were at some toy store, and I was like a little, little kid, like three years old or something, just starting to talk and walk. I think that's the age where you do yeah. that. I don't know. I'm not good at identifying what age you do yeah. things. Um, and he said, you can have anything in the store, but what do you want? And there were like toys and Elmo dolls and, you know, Sesame Street bullshit and G.I. Joe's. And I, whatever, I pointed at this bat and I, I want that one. <laughs> I, what? You want this ugly like rubber bat? That one. <laughs> and so that became my bat. And for whatever reason. Was that I, like your thing? Elias. That was its oh. name? That was its name. Oh. You yeah. named it or it came with that name? I think I named it. Elias, was, that's not a name, though. I know. Okay. I think I was probably trying to say Elliot. Elliot or Elias. <laughs> oh. Or Elias. Kind of, yeah. I like Elias. Elias, Elias yeah. yeah. Probably because I had no teeth. It sounded like yeah. Elias. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, or I had one tooth. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was yeah. good. That is funny. <laughs> wow. I, I think, but I think it's also like fear is taught, right? You don't know to be afraid of something until it, it it scares you. Same thing, like you don't know something's hot until you get burnt. Mm -hmm. So like we we also um, have friends, Chrissy uh, Fox, for example, is another actress and her daughter actively plays with heart. She works in heart films and her daughter actively plays with monsters and Michael Myers. And like we went to the beach one day and she was like, I was like, oh, who do you have in your bucket? And she said, I have this mermaid, this mermaid, this mermaid and Michael. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow. face action figure. That's yeah. awesome. She's great. Uh, yeah. And all of them. And like she just doesn't <laughs> know to be afraid of them because they've never been, they just, they're toys. And it's honestly, just, we went to that kid's birthday party. Easiest time getting gifts for it because like yeah. we literally got her like a Pennywise plush and loved it flipped out over it was i love that yeah. yeah got that yeah ear piercing little kid screaming of, of delight when, when that was a banger it. of a kid's party it was that. it was the best kid's birthday party i've ever been to that makes me smile yeah, yeah. I, I love that horror is continuing to be so prevalent where like little kids are yeah. are grabbing for the pennywise doll instead of the gi joe how young does your audience get like, what's like the main demo of, of Ice It gets Hills pretty young. I've, I mean, I've been seeing babies come out, <laughs> yeah. oh, not by themselves yeah. yet. But um, we see very little kids. You know, I was just at a, a horror, I did three horror conventions this past month. And, you know, you can attest to it. We're seeing little kids oh, yeah. coming dressed as these characters. Um, and at first, the first time I started to see that at our shows, I was like, oh, that's really cute. Like, the parents are kind of dressing them up and, yeah. you know, using them like as a little accessory, like, oh, that's cute. Mm -hmm. But these kids know the words to the songs and stuff wow. like that. Oh, wow. So I'm going to be responsible for a lot of therapy down the road. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. paying for it. <laughs> but yeah. Can't pin it on them. Can't pin Can't. it on me. <laughs> I guess. I think, I, yeah, I think it depends on the... I on the the child like what's to say that you again talk about scores if the kid is like responding to something why do they have to listen to like twinkle twinkle little star <laughs> if like they're in the car vibing to motorhead like yeah yeah why do, why does it matter I agree and I think there's a lot of parallels between like heavy metal music and classical music which apparently is good for the fetus I've been told oh, oh what classical music is I guess so yeah you know so not necessarily heavy metal well, I mean, I'm saying, you know, you put the headphones around the, the belly. What do you oh, call it? The uterus, I think, is no, what it's called. No. The belly. <laughs> yeah. The uterus, the, the uterus is inside. Anatomy, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, see, I'm not good with anatomy <laughs> or identifying different dogs, shiatsus, and stuff. <laughs> but um, there's no reason why, you know, you know, we're not showing the fetus. If we're showing them Beethoven, why not Cannibal Corpse? <laughs> Yeah, Probably right. not the band Dying Fetus. That's a bad idea. No, just because yeah. of the name. Be a little bit. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. They might be a little confused. But. A, a bit. Yeah. I wonder if... I, don't, I wonder if someone's done that experiment, though. I, you, like, that would... You should ask... Actually, don't. Yeah, don't ask. <laughs> don't, don't ask Dude. someone to do that to their child. Well, I, uh, another quick funny story on the, on the topic of uterus. Um, <laughs> I was signing this autograph at this convention. And this woman came over, like, fully decked out. And I don't know. It was... Jason or Michael, except one of the, you know, the, the forefathers of the genre. And she was also pregnant. And I, I was, you know, she was telling me how she's going to, um, you know, raise the child to be a horror fan. I was like, that's awesome. Uh -huh. And I wasn't thinking really about what I wrote on the 
autograph. And I realized as I slid it over and she took it, I wrote, take care of that baby. <laughs> Not in the sense, you know, when you say something, take care of it. Oh, oh, my God. oh yeah. Oh. Oh. Not so yeah, you're, you're, yeah, not, yeah, the not that one. Style, yeah. Yeah, 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 not the coat hanger thing. No. That's Ooh. horrible, <laughs> bad. But uh, I was, if you're out there and you're watching, I meant care for your child. Don't, yeah. and I hope you didn't you know, do I what I said. I would have taken it the right way, I think. I hope so. Of course, so. I'm not a pregnant woman, so I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty Although bad. We'll probably cut right, that part out. <laughs> she has the right to choose if she should. That's right, and I wrote that on the back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take care of that baby Maybe. in whichever way you choose to do so. It Correct. is up to you, your body, your choice. <laughs> Screw was... Ron DeSantis or whatever his name is. Is he bad? Hart Spencer. He's bad. What? Yeah, he's bad. <laughs> he's not I good. mean, it's, I guess it's it's up to you to determine. <laughs> but, he's, but he's not good. He's not pro- woman i don't believe he's not showing up to spook no 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 <laughs> different no. crowd that would be so interesting <laughs> if like a political if like we've had horror conventions where like other things are going on in the hotels that we're all staying at like weddings oh yeah and mm -hmm. things and i wonder if they like it or it's like their worst no nightmare. they hate they it must hate it. imagine having your wedding the most important day of your life <laughs> and uh, and assuming you are like a <laughs> vanilla mainstream person <laughs> who's not into we horror show and then you yeah and then yeah uh, yeah. Our merry band of misfits shows up and <laughs> horrible. people just all decked out in pinhead BDSM looking gear. And they keep opening the door to the venue. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh I, thought, I thought this was the signing room. No, this is where we're getting married. Yeah. And, you know, this is our bar mitzvah. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god! I mean, well, so you also, but you also planned your own convention recent. Well, the second year we were both at it this year. We've been raving about it ever Thank since. Thank you. It's, it's the best. Convention. What I think, arguably, mm. the the best one we've ever we've ever been to. Thank um, you. What made you decide that you wanted to do to do something like that? I think just like anything I've loved, like horror movies and music conventions and meeting people that I admire from these movies has always been one of my main attractions, passion, yeah. hobbies. And I remember being a young kid, probably like seven or eight years old, and going to my first screen park. It was called Spooky World. Oh, in, right. Um, in outside of Boston, yeah, Massachusetts. Yeah. Which has a documentary Woods. about yeah, now. That you're in. Yeah. yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. It's called Spooktacular. Check it out, very cool documentary. <laughs> but when I was, when I was young, I didn't realize that not everyone had a spooky world down the street. This was before they were sort of a dime a dozen. Yeah. Before, you know, Universal had their thing or Knott's might have been around the same time. But this is before, All like, screen parks existed yeah. in every mm -hmm. major town, city, whatever. So the first two times I went, I was too scared to go in. I was like six years old. I got to the parking lot and a ghoul, <laughs> like, jumped okay. out at me. And um, I turned to my dad and go, Dad, take me home right now. Really? He's like, he's like, all right, but your shoes untied. He said, I don't care. Get me home right now. <laughs> and we left. We didn't even go in. I was like six years old. The scary looking motherfucker jumped out. I guess that's like a, a logical response. I guess so. I'm embarrassed about it. So the next year we went. Yeah, you should be. I should six be. Six year old. Six year old pussy. <laughs> next year, bam. Same thing happens. Ghoul jumps out. Dad, get me the fuck out of here. So he took me to see. Um, Ernest Scared Stupid instead, oh, nice. which is a great film yeah. with the milk and the trolls. Third year, he said, Spencer, if you don't go in this year, I'm never taking you to Spooky World again. All right, I'm going. I made it through. We did this awesome uh, hayride. You know, I never heard of a haunted hayride. This, again, this is before yeah. mm -hmm. this th This was a real thing. And it, yeah. was, it was so like the antithesis of like a corporate kind of a feel. It was like very DIY, but it was done with like a lot of love and passion and um, you know, you would go through Crystal Lake or you would go through uh, Tromaville. Like, it was like really being in the movie as yeah. a little kid. And like, there was a spooky world sign and the, the hayride would drive right up next to it. And then the sign would fall, but not hit. You know, this is yeah. before that was like yeah. a, a common thing. And then you got off the ride. Again, this is like 94, 95. Yeah. And you meet Kane Hodder, you play <laughs> oh, Jason. So cool. You meet George Wilbur, you played yeah. Michael Myers. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, Elvira was there, Robert England was yeah. there, and uh, that sort of put the bug in my ear about, wow, you can do something where you can meet the people that you admire from these movies. So that always stuck with me. And uh, as the band's following grew within the genre of metal, 
I would go to con a convention as a fan and I would notice people stopping me and saying that they liked the band a lot. Yeah. Then we started to do them just on a merchandise level, like set up a nice nine kills uh, merchandise booth at like Rock and Shock, which was the the horror convention to go to in New England. So eventually I started to be asked to do the conventions, which was an honor. And uh, I did this one called Astronomicon, which is a great convention put on by the guys in Twisted, uh -huh. great band that we're friends with. And I went to the convention and I was just blown away by how well it was run, how they treated the guests, how they treated the celebrities. Um, you know, you got to your room and there was like a hockey jersey with your name on it. I was, wow. like, oh. I was like, wow, if we ever do our own convention, I'm getting these guys to set it up. And these very nice guys, George and Mike, mm -hmm. we became friendly with them and we uh, decided to partner up and do our own. Amazing. And the rest is historic. <laughs> History. No, it really was. It was incredible. We had a, a fantastic time. Like, yeah. To the point where I don't think other conventions have been able to measure up. Since. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. That's very nice yeah. of you to say. I think it's the community aspect of it. Like kind of we were talking about it. the the community around the fans in genre and like you're all kind of in it together and supporting each other. That's that's what I found in genre. And I, th I think, I mean, we met at a convention. Yep. That's how we became friends. Mm -hmm. I met Barbara at a convention. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, I Still think <laughs> I think that's how <laughs> that's how we became friends. But I think it is like you don't always get a convention that's programmed around supporting each other and building each other up. And when you have one that does that, it permeates through the audience as well. It's. I, I mean, I still have people here that in L.A. that I run into that were there that That's were like, awesome. oh, my God, it was so cool. It was so great meeting you there that are still talking. It's been over That's a great. month. It's yeah. incredible. I love that. Would you ever want to score a horror movie? Do you like? Boom. Yeah. <laughs> yes. One more time. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a lot of fun when we do our. Uh, music videos, which are sort of a overarching movie, both yeah. of you have been involved, mm -hmm. uh, are uh, the other member in my band, Joe, yeah. who's a jack of all trades in terms of music. He's one of the most talented guys I've ever worked with. He wow. can play every instrument. And we score our music videos and the um, corresponding storyline together. Okay. So we get we get sort of a taste of what that's like to play with man, the music really changes this part. And and so, yeah, I would love the opportunity to do it. It's a lot of work and we always, um, we always run out of time, yeah. you know? Yeah. It takes so long. So when you hear that like John Carpenter did Halloween in like two or three days, you're like, how the fuck did he do <laughs> yeah. that? Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it, it's an incredible thing to be able to play with, you know, sound design and scoring. So yeah, I would love to do it. If you were to be given the opportunity to to direct your own horror film, would you want to take on a franchise or create your own concept? I would think I would want to do my own. Yeah. But I wouldn't turn turn the job down <laughs> as John Carpenter. As long as you pay me, <laughs> yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> what would be the franchise you'd want to take on? Would it be Halloween? Whoever has the biggest checkbook. <laughs> no, no. Other than the notebook, uh, probably... <laughs> Hmm. I think Friday the 13th. Yeah. Oh, really? I think we Why? need a shot of life into it. I think Friday the 13th has the most room for uh, experimentation because it's it's the things that need to be there are so bare bones that you can really. And I, I think we've seen that in the Never Hike Alone uh, yes. fan yeah. films that they've been, able, they've been able to take the, you know, the Friday elements and then do something fun with them. Whereas like Nightmare, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that that you got to kind of play by the rules mm -hmm. and, and Halloween has Michael, but like Jason's such a cipher. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, you know, have fun with him. You yeah, know? An open book. Yeah, I'd yeah. love to go back, and I don't know if the TV series that's coming out is doing that, but I'd like to see Jason as a kid and get that whole, whole back summer of when he died and mm -hmm. then the killings that happened and yeah. the water was bad. Yeah, I want to see her poisoning the water. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. That that one little line about Camp Crystal Lake is jinxed. Yeah. <laughs> What's that guy's name? Are you talking about Crazy Ralph or are you talking no, about the crazy, truck driver? The truck driver. It's a weird name like oh, Elias. Yeah. Oh, something. yeah. It's uh, Marcus oh, man, Marius. It but it's the guy who voices Maurice in Beauty and the Beast. You That's did the tell me that. Oh, it does. Yeah. I, now that you Arvis? say that, 
Like, I know it sounds weird. It's it's like totally different voices, but I that voice actor is actually like pretty well known for doing having a really big range. I forget his name. We'll have yeah. to look. He's, He's good. just the truck driver in the first Friday the Thirteenth. Very creepy that he grabs her ass. He does. Yeah, gets... boosts her up right by the butt. <laughs> like like yeah. not necessary at all. Yeah, Artemis, whatever your name yeah, is. Artemis. Yeah. <laughs> Artemis. It's something Speaking like that. it is. It's something like that. Speaking of ass grabs, um, <laughs> we have. <laughs> Cash now it's the ass grab ass. section of the show. Uh, no, oh on, wow! Uh, what kind of show is this? Uh, on this show, though, we do <sighs> we do ask our guests to what, show their ass. Yes. Um, <laughs> See I, the ass cheeks. Yes, both. Oh. No, I was a little disappointed. I have to. I have to tell you, I'm going to call you out on this. That oh. in um that you didn't in oh, your most sack back. It, that you didn't do full tuck. Full in, tuck. Um, I was I was waiting for it. I was like, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. And then you didn't. And I was like, Spencer, well, were you advise not to <laughs> for the boner bonus features? There are there is a tuck back. We're talking oh, about really? the music yeah, video there's... for Meet and Greet. I yeah, was which ready. is a, a Silence of the Lambs themed uh, yeah. music video. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, where you are playing. And I I was sitting there, character. and the person next to me, I'm like, he's going full tuck. He's going full yeah. tuck. Yeah. Didn't. I know. If you know, blame you two, blame the censors, but I was fully oh, I will. engorged. Lloyd Kaufman went full tuck. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Lloyd Kaufman, 75 year old man, went full tuck for Return to Newcomb High Volume 2. I mean, Lloyd Kaufman. Wait, you really? don't, you don't <laughs> want to live your life according to what <laughs> Lloyd right. Kaufman will do. But he Holy did. Shit. He did. Is he that went... on the front cover of the DVD? Yes, it is. No, no. <laughs> is, it, um, is it a like a thing like this? He does a Silence of the Limbs. No shit. Yeah. I don't know if I want to see that one. <laughs> I honestly, I love it. I love yeah. it. I loved wow. it. But um, speaking of full tux and ass grabs, the on this show. Is, we, oh, that's the segment. It's called <laughs> full show. tuck. Wow. On this, tuck on this show, we ask our guests. Tucker what, Carlson, tuck it back. There's something in there. I, oh, I, Has he been a guest tuck. on this show? Yes, actually, no. <laughs> He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, there he is. <laughs> What's up, Tuck? <laughs> He's doing a Silence of the Lambs. Oh, segment. perfect! Like a, yeah, you know, um, <laughs> just with a little bow tie. Yeah, yeah, he seems like he'd be a fan of Buffalo Bill. Yeah, for yeah. sure. With the blankets and everything. Mm -hmm. that he has. Definitely. <laughs> we ask our guests what their night light is on this show. Night light. And what night, night light. light? And what we mean by this? <laughs> wait light. for it. Wait for it. What we mean by this is, in amidst all the dark and terrible things of in the world, what is the light that that keeps you going? What is the thing that keeps you motivated when you're feeling? At your lowest, like it, like it would be like a character. Or... No, 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 no. This is real shit. Man. Real life, real like, shit. Yeah. But I'm saying, am I manifesting it into like a light bulb? No, <laughs> if no. You'd like, Cause, but because that's how I like to think about it. If you'd like, because if it was like you know naughty or something, it would be like a light bulb with Naughty's face on it. Okay. We've talked about yeah. doing that. Uh, James said Chelsea. Chelsea's mine. And, I'm going and with we, Nadia, so we, I seem like a good guy. Yeah, and we <laughs> talked about and we talked about putting a little a little night light here with Chelsea's face. <laughs> Oh, it. that's awesome. Maybe we should do one for Nadia since Let's she's not do here it. today. Yeah, we'll I love that. Let's have all the ladies and pets. Everyone says their pets. Yeah. yeah. And, then their, and their significant others just lined up on little like I love that. Merch. <laughs> merch. Bob, get on the merch. <laughs> <Bob>. <laughs> I'm teasing it. So um, that's that's all we have time for today. We could All of us could that's talk it? for hours. That's all we have. <laughs> I know. I wish. I wish we could keep going. It's all we have time for. Um. But where, if the people don't know, where can the people of the internet? Talkback.com. Oh, no. we're okay. Where can Ice9kills.com. They... Ice Ice9kills.com. <laughs> thank you guys for, thank you, Spencer, for, for joining us. Yes. Thank, thank you guys for listening. If you liked this episode, please like, subscribe, give us five stars, hit the, hit the, Smash that button. Ring the bell. Ring stab the, it. Ring the Boom. stab it. Stab that 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 Boom. button. Um, and uh, let us know what you think. Who you'd like to see on next, and what some of your nightmares are. Until next time, I'm Catherine Corcoran. I'm James A. Janice. This is Scream Dreams. Remember? Be sure to keep the nightlight on. <laughs> what is still it? Still not it. No, but it can be. Yay. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Ha 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 ha